Blissful Growing Garden Party. So, if you are on Facebook, search Blissful Growing Garden Party, because you will see Blissful Growing. That's like a page page. The other one is a group page. And、um, while I cross postings there,、um, things like live streaming and like this,、um, I post it on the group page. So for friends or people who can't come and join, you know, they can go there. Nicole, why you are so in the back? Oh, I, I would think she want to see. <laughs> she sat on my lap so she could see. Oh, did you see this habitat I brought? Oh, I know. I have caterpillar and I have one that is waiting to hang Jay, and then I have two chrysalis. And actually, there's one. If you guys notice it, there's one right here. There's a chrysalis right there. Yeah, it happens in nature. Still eating. I know they keep on eating. So just、um, so just to be clear today, I am not talking about the butterfly. If I talk about the butterfly. Everybody should have snack, and we sit down for lunch because I can talk about it the whole day. It's just so much fun because they're just so interesting. So I'm actually when I, when I was writing my、um, what I was writing, what I'm talking about. See, I'm like this is even already long. I'm like, oh my god, can I go through this in half an hour? You know, because you're just you know when you're so passionate about something,、oh, yeah. you ended up. Want to say a lot, so I know it's only a lot.、Um, I try to kind of just talk about something a bit more general as opposed to too specific, because you won't remember. Trust me.、Um, I do need your email, so make sure I can read your email. After this, I'm gonna make sure I can read everybody's email because I will email you the resources and I'll email you the page.、Um, I'll post this on my blog on my.、Um, On my website, blissfulgrowing.com, and、um, the link to the resources that I that I have here is going to be there as well.、Oh, nice. So, you know, I'll do the research for you. So you don't have to look around <laughs> searching for it because there are tons of them. There are tons of them. Tons of them are repeat. There's there are different things. This is kind of funny. This is like politics. This is the politics of butterflies. <laughs> Seriously, there are two facts. Like you know, two factions. I'm not gonna be the judge, so I'm just gonna lay all the facts. And what do you think? It's up to you.、Okay. All right. Hi. Hey, how you doing? doing well. Good. So I know, I know, it's gonna squeeze.、Um, and I'm so grateful for the nursery for letting us, you know, use the space. Yeah.、Um, you know, and they're really nice. And、um, by the way, I do counted about fourteen households that signed that signed in for, and reserved. I know there are more. <laughs>、uh, Melina, well, you know what? I don't want. I don't want to spoil it. I'll I'll leave it I'll, until the end. But okay, let's start. I am going to change this to、um, not sleeping. Display brightness, auto lock, never. I hope you guys can see it. This is the, this is the brightest I can do, but um, all right. So welcome to Monarch Garden Seminar, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, see, you got your morning coffee. Oh water. Oh water. Okay. <laughs> If if you email me, I think some of you I email back. You know, it's like don't you know we're gonna just chill, relax, casual. Bring your morning coffee. You can bring your bagels and snack <laughs> while I talk. You know, because this is it. So the next time you join my free seminar is gonna be like this, chill. So you know, feel free to bring your coffee or tea to wake you up. Right? Okay. So I'm going to talk about what makes a garden a monarch butterfly garden. We all know about pollinator garden, yes? Pollinator gardens are gardens that is friendly for bees, pollinators, butterflies, and wasps, moth, things that's flying around, flies even, and even ants, 
birds, bats, to say, you know, a few. So, you know, you wouldn't think bats are pollinator. We probably don't have them here, but, but you know, it's part of it. But to make it specifically a monarch butterfly, you need to have a specific plant because, um, yes, the butterfly will just eat nectars from any plants, any flowers, but in order for the butterfly to reproduce, to lay eggs and everything, they rely on one specific plant, only one type. There are different variations, like different species of that type, but, you know, mainly milkweed. And uh, the genus name is Aslepias. So if you happen to come across, it doesn't say milkweed, or even if it says milkweed, if it doesn't say the genus name Aslepias, that's not really a true milkweed. Okay, so just kind of remember that the second part of that name could be different. Crassifica, fascicularis, blah, 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 and all this other stuff. Um, okay, so why we're talking about monarch butterfly garden specifically? It's because monarch migrates. You just ask about the migration. Monarch migrates. They migrate 3,000 miles from the north to the south, back to the north. Um, and it's important because actually we can use their migration pattern and the amount of butterfly that travels as a gauge to climate control. I mean, climate changes and the way forest and land being managed, i.e. like deforestation and how we do farmland, the pesticides that they use or whatnot. So we can use that the declining in the population or the thriving in the population and yes i guess scientists use that they monitor it every year and every year we heard news about it oh monarch population increase all oh, monarch population down it's like stock markets always going up and down right um so let me see huh. a quick a quick fun fact you see monarch butterfly, you know, they're like orange and black, but do you know there's a telltale sign to distinguish the female butterfly and the male butterfly? Do you know? You do know? Yes, there's two little dots. No, that's actually for the male. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's for the male. So they look all similar, right? But if you look at it closely, when they open up their wings, you see these two dots, and that's actually the male. The female doesn't, it just straight down. What happens if the wings are closed? Like when they're landed and they close their wing, there you go. Faintly, you'll see this kind of like fuzzy thingy where the dots, like on the other side of the dots, you see that. Whereas the female is like nice, crisp line and clean, okay? Can you see that right there? It's like a smudge. Isn't that cute? So next time you see a monarch butterfly come to your garden, you know, sneak up on them and then see if you can see if you can spot it. All right. Okay. Now um, we are going to the next one. So let's just talk about milkweed. And this is the migration pattern made by you guys. Um, the butterfly that migrates, they, they, they do travel a lot from down south up to the, well, this is the U.S. map, but actually travel all the way up further to southern Canada. They travel, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go worry. 3,000 miles, one way, and another 3,000 miles the other way. Okay, so let's talk about milkweed. You're asking, who's asking about the poison? Okay, so is milkweed poisonous? depends on how you handle it. It's called milkweed because I'm gonna um, do this. Sorry, I'll just use this one then. All right, do you see how that white dot, oh, that yeah. sap, yeah? So this is called, this sap is like milky white. Let's call it, you know, that's why they call it milkweed. And the sap is in the plant. So if you break the leaf, you break the stem, if you break anything, it's like their blood. It's this sap. Now this sap is is toxic to most insects and animals. So not you don't find a lot of insects in here. Oh it, it does have the pest. It does have pests, but not a lot of them can um, eat this plant. So as a result obviously the the caterpillars and also the butterflies also toxic. Um, therefore, the, the 
the color, the loud color, the bands. And that's usually signify for the birds or the predators. I'm like, you know, you don't want to eat me. <laughs> I know for human is different. When it's colorful and nice like that, we want to eat them, right? It's different. But for the, um, for the birds, they usually shy away from that. For human, the, the sap, it kind of depends. If you have a sensitive skin, it might irritate you. Um, thank God I don't because I just kind of like go like this and whatever and wash it. Um, you can simply wash it. You know, you can simply hose it and it just wash off. It's, it's kind of like water soluble, like, you know, water like that. Um, they're not oily at all. Uh, but do not get it into your eyes at all. If you get it in your hand, make sure you don't touch your face. Um, wash it first. Um, even for someone who has been growing milkweed, and I joined a bunch of Facebook groups on people who's crazy about, you know, growing all types of milkweed for years, 10 years, they still get it in their eyes. So I kind of stopped doing that because <laughs> I'd rather go safe and doing vegetable garden. Um, so yeah, so if you think, uh, if you ask if it's poisonous, if you get the sap, you have cats, you have dogs, they brush on that, that's fine. As long as the cats don't chew on the, the plants. Usually animals have their instinct. They know that they want, you know, they want to eat something that's poisonous to them. It's like natural instinct. But sometimes they're kind of dumb. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you know your pet likes to chew on your vegetable or your stuff, yeah, don't try to put it as far away as possible or in places where your pets cannot access, yeah? Okay, so now we're getting into the discussion about native milkweed and non-native milkweed. Are oh, you seeing that one? I'm going to start with the native milkweed. Now, this whole de debate about non-native, which is this pretty one right here that you see every nursery, Home Depots, everybody's gardens, they have this one because they are pretty. First is this one, which is kind of like boring right now <laughs> well when they bloom they're really nice yeah so um the debate is well i'm gonna talk about it some would just say do not do not like grow this one they even have they they draw the sign with the slash on it you know they're really like the police about it even actually the circe's what to call that name circe's it's an organization to conservation of invertebrate i know the name is really cool though let me see nope so that's an organization circes somewhere in there in the back well that one actually say in their website we do not we strongly suggest that you do not grow this at all do not grow this in your garden or they'll send a police and ticket you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think they do that, but they don't. Um, okay, so there's two debate. So I'm gonna first talk about the native milkweed. So native milkweed looks pretty. Look, nothing wrong with it. You know, the color of the flowers Perfect. is pinkish uh, white. Um, this is blown up. They're small, they're like this, they're like a ball, yeah? The leaves are narrow, so if you see very narrow leaves on milkweed typically then you know that's more native to our area um they are perennial so they die out when the weather gets really cold kind of like other perennials and they're true perennials for our area so they do die because you know some um animals they don't even die out in our weather and they just continue kind of uh, growing down a little bit but keep on growing yeah but no the native milkweed they do die out like completely they dried out and then die um and then when the weather heats up in the spring you come back up again uh, business as usual basically um da -da -da. so the the concern now with a lot of people who, who told you do not grow the the uh, the non-native is because of this parasite it is microcosmic parasite that in fact um, monarch butterfly quite specifically actually because these parasites they do live on the plants on the leaves on the stem on, on the, the flowers ones. is that what you're saying actually on all milkweed oh, wow. yeah on all milkweed so when the, um 
Okay, the name of the parasite, if you want to know, is Ophriocystis electrosura. We just call them OE. Okay? <laughs> OE. So when you're like, oh, you got OE, OE. And like, that's what they're talking about, that parasite. So the parasite lives on the milkweed and the butterfly, they get infected. They won't be able to emerge from the chrysalis perfectly. They will get deformed somehow it's so sad and like they would get deformed like either crinkled wing or something something or they don't even come out completely they like pop halfway and then they stop um you know then just die yeah. if they happen to come out emerge like normal like nothing happens they become the carrier I'm talking about coronavirus now <laughs> yeah so they become a carrier um you know when the butterfly goes to a, a plant the, uh, the parasite actually lives in the body as a spore. So it's on the body area or in the wing. So as they flap and they touch it or the body touch it, then the parasite now is transferred to the plants that doesn't even have OE before. Okay. And then the cycle continues. The caterpillar eats the plant. It gets ingested in there. It won't kill the caterpillar. Ingested in there. Although actually sometimes they do. Ingested in there. And then um, it turns into the butterfly. The butterfly carries the OE and then the cycle continues. So that's why people who say do not, you know, plant this one or the non-native ones is because of that. And the simple fact is because this plant is just continue on growing and growing and growing. It just doesn't die. It doesn't matter how cold we get here. It just continue on growing. It just kind of reduced down a little bit, but it just continue on growing. Now the parasites, if the plant, the, the host plant died, obviously the parasites also die because, you know, there's nothing to, to live on. But in this case, since it doesn't die, then the parasites continue on going. And in, in California, we have butterflies who don't migrate. You're talking about the migration? Yeah. So then, you know, the cycle is just keep on continuing. Okay. And just getting, it's just getting worse and worse. That's it's what they say. So that's basically, that's the argument. Well, the thing is, like I said, we have two types of um, butterflies in our region, in, in specifically here in Southern California. We have the transients, the one who migrates. Oh, this is OE, by the way. This is what the wing looks like under microscope when it's healthy. It's really nice, you know, it has that pattern. But when it has OE, it has that little ugh, icky things like around it. So enthusiasts usually get microscope and every time a butterfly closes, you might want to get it just for a heck of it. Um, and they, you know, carefully put the butterfly under the micro microscope and see it. I know they do that. Um, and that's what happened when they come out. If they, they don't eat close properly, like it crinkles and it just deform, you know, it's, and there are worse cases, you know, so this is that one. This is a different one. That's the Hello Yellow. Um, now, is that native, the Hello Yellow? Actually, no. Oh, okay. No. There are uh, 15 types that is native to here, and that's going to be in the PDF that there's a list of it that is approved by that um, organization, Circe's. So, in this map, actually, this map is from Circe's. I got this. Um, there's this one that says non migratory population. And there's also part of it right here. So we are part of the area that when butterfly come here, they love California sun so much, they do not want to leave, okay? They like the chill, they like the beach, you know, they just stay here, they enjoy the sun. So, but they do still have to, um, they still have to eat, they still have to reproduce. Now, here's another interesting fact about monarch. The migratory monarch, they leave they, uh, they live up to seven to eight months and they call the super generation monarch they're bigger they're larger bigger wingspan because they will have to fly from here all the way down south that three thousand miles they, they just travel through that's the super generation the one that goes up they, they're not they're, they're normal because they're going up they go up in stages, but they're coming back down. Yes. So during the migration, they actually have this, this thing they call, um, in women, we have menopause, they have diapause. 
So diapause is when their their switch in their body click and they just stop reproducing. Male and female, they don't have no interest of mating. Um, they won't be they won't reproduce, basically. Their sole focus is just to fly all the way down to a warmer area. But the one here, obviously they have no concern about that. I was like, you know, I want to stay here. They continue to reproduce. In order to reproduce, they need the plants. So that's the other side of the argument. Like we have here a very interesting um, scenario where we have monarch here. That's why sometimes when you see around Thanksgiving, you still see monarch butterfly flooding around. Yeah, they look kind of old and battered, you know, and then they're female and they're looking for the plants like frantically because they need to lay eggs. So that's why we have this, they lay eggs there. And we have Californian, you know, Southern California monarch. So, um, you know, it's up to you guys, if whatever you want to do, like which side of the, you know, arguments you want to sit on. But the good thing about it is though, the OE parasite is not sticky. They live on the surface of the plants. So nothing like a good drench of rain or a good hose would kind of, so yeah. that's like a natural way of getting rid of them. Yes. Okay. And, okay. Another name for this tropical milkweed is, do you know? Mexican butterfly weed. And guess what? Where it's from? Mexico. Exactly. <laughs> In Mexico, they don't have four seasons. They don't even have two se three seasons. So guess what? Over there, they live forever they grow in bushes and everything they're actually the one that feeds the migratory monarch when they're in the south what happened with the oe over there i don't know honestly i don't know all the research just basically stopped there all the articles usually just say over here do not grow that so so you know i laid it all out of course um this one because it doesn't die out, die out in the winter it's considered invasive once these flowers become pods, I uh, don't see any pods forming yet. But once these things become pods, um, they have this fuzzy thingy. Okay, the fluff. Once it has, um, it has pods, it matures, it bursts out, poof, goes with the wind, and you get milkweed everywhere in your garden. Maybe that's why they call it weed, because they do grow everywhere. Yeah, say, yeah okay. they do grow everywhere. <laughs> so if you have it in your garden, chances are you will have them everywhere in your garden, and your neighbors will have them too in their garden. So imagine if it's in the wild, then you know if someone plants it out in their slope, you know whatever, and then it will just cover the whole slope. Then you have that, um, you have this out there. So that's why. That organization, like, you know, some people is like, you know, that's invasive. That's not native. Um, we can't have that. Um, what if we don't have a good rain in that year? Things like that. So that's that's where the concern lies. And it's valid. You know, I'm, I kid you not. And you do, do you, at some, you know, some degree, you do not want to have um, an over infestation of this in your garden, too. And they're really easy to grow. The volunteer will just pop up out of nowhere, like in a crack. <laughs> If you walk around in the nursery today, pay attention. You'll see this growing from the ground, like hot rock like this, like in between things like that. I mean, they'll pull out some of them, but I still see some that grows big. So at home, um, there, are some, there are certain ways that you can do at home to manage that, yeah? Um, so what do you think? You think you're going to grow native or not? You, you don't have to ask. You don't have to answer me. It's up Does to you. Does the native have the same effect with those pods? They do, but the thing is they die out in the winter. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Question? Do you have a question? Yes. Non-native. Are they non-native? Oh, you're a non-native? I know they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this guy, his name is Craig. Craig is the butterfly man. He lives in Houston, Texas. Um, and he is actually the butterfly expert at Houston Interactive Aquarium and Animal Preserve. He has a, he has a Facebook group for grow, uh, rearing monarch butterfly, raising monarch butterflies. It's really informative. I like him. And um, I like what he said about, you know, if you are so worried about 
trying to increase um, monarch population. I mean, just grow milkweed. As simple as that. You know, just grow it. Just choose one and just grow it. You know, just don't think, overthink it too much. And that's what I like. Personally, I, I, I do plant both. And it's just because they are different. Um, this one only feeds so much. There's a different one that is called um, showy or swamp milkweed. Is there a swamp here? Common milkweed. The leaves are bigger. So that actually will feed a lot more butterflies. So if you raise monarch butterfly, do look into that. It saves you time and money. There's actually called giant milkweed. It's a tree. So I, I, I really cannot imagine walking under a tree with like a bunch of caterpillars on top of my head. I, I can't. But, but it is a tree. It can grow up to 10, 10 feet. And the leaves are like this big. So if you ever run out of uh, leaves, find a Facebook group called Milkweed, One Milkweed SOS or something like that. It's a group of people who basically will send you milkweed leaves just to save the monarch. It's amazing. It is amazing. Okay. So we talk about the, the politics of the milkweed. I'm going to talk about taking care of the plants regardless regardless they are native or they're not native yeah seed management so like i said the seeds can burst out and you ended up having more milkweed than you probably want to easy way to do it if you only have a few plants is every time that turns into a pod just snip them it won't really become a problem once you have a lot of caterpillars on it because the bigger caterpillar this this chunky one they'll just eat through the seeds, the seed pods. They love it. They will eat through the seed pods. Um, another one is if you want to collect the seeds, if you want to collect the seeds before it bursts out, you have those little organza uh, bags. Yeah, yeah, the pouches. I seen, and I did that before, but I stopped doing it. Um, you just cover it and just tie it. So when it bursts, it bursts in that pod, okay? Um, did I tell you just snip it? Yeah, you just snip the seed pots and that's it. But it's just hard, especially if you have a lot. And next thing you know, you're just like, oh, forget it. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> it's just too much work. I have, at that point, I only have two and I'm like, I gave up after a while. I was like, forget it. Um, oh, interesting facts about the seeds. Uh, all right, this fluff thingy. We call it the fluff. Because um, in World War II, the buoyancy of this fluff was put to the test. So they used that actually to create insulation for the jacket. I know. And it's actually really fluffy. It's really soft. Um, someone have time and collect enough of them. <laughs> actually, there's a way to collect it. You put it in a paper bag, all the seeds, put it in a paper bag. You shake it really hard. The seed goes to the bottom. The fluff basically just goes to the top. So they use it inside that kind of jacket, like as a fluff inside. It's actually quite warm. Um, and they actually also has an oil absorbing properties and can be used to soak up spilled crude oil while repelling water. So I know that's, that's really interesting, I thought. Yeah. All right, so, um, so that's taking care of the leaves. Now, when you want to feed the monarch uh, butterflies, kind of same through with when we want to feed ourselves with the vegetable, leafy vegetable, peppers, or whatever. Um, more leaves is better, right? In order to encourage more leaves, like you see how this is kind of like single, 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 single. It's not a lot of leaves. Um, the way to do that is to pinch off the top. It's encouraging the side growth because it's just the nature of any pretty much a lot of plants um they want to grow they can't grow up they grow to the side so the more you pinch off the more the side growth will come out and um, same thing with this especially with that with this i'm not so worried about um pinching off the flowers but with this one the uh the, the native this one is called narrow leaf it is narrow like look at the leaf compared to that one yeah um, so this one, whenever you see it starting to, 
oh, there you go. When you start seeing them like trying to become flower, snip it off. So it's, it's just the nature of the plants. Same thing with vegetable. Their sole purpose is to reproduce. They produce flower, they produce seed. Once their seed is all done, they die. They're done. So we don't want them to, you know, die too fast. So you just snip, snip this off and encourage more site growth and just prolong the life of that milkweed. Okay, so that's that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention with this one, if let's say you want to grow this and you're still concerned about the OE or whatnot, um, the common practice and it's suggested is when it comes to like around, I usually do it around Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, when the weather is really cold and you don't really see flooding butterflies anymore. The rain's not there yet. You know, the rain usually comes later on January. Is to really cut back these plants. If you notice, this plant was actually cut back too. It was cut back here. It was cut back there. So I would cut it back all the way to here. There's still like three or four nodes. I would cut it back there. So it's like really bare. Like bare roses. Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, it basically kills off any OE if it happens to be there. But the nice thing about it, it promotes a fuller growth of the plants. When it comes back, it's going to create a fuller plant, a fuller bush. So that's a good practice for both reasons, okay? Um, growing seeds, uh, growing milkweed from seeds. Sorry, it is kind of sunny, huh? Mm -hmm. I should probably stand over there for you guys. Um, growing milkweed from seeds. If it's local seeds, uh, if it's local milkweed, it's pretty easy to grow. If it's not local, I'm talking about not local as in, in the East Coast or the Midwest or region that has four seasons, then those seeds typically need to go through um, a cold stratification period. So which means you have to put it in the fridge or something like that to kind of simulate winter before it actually will germinate. So it is a bit trickier. And I did uh, encounter a lot of seeds that doesn't want to grow. And I helped it out by snipping the top and all kinds of things like that. Save your time, just buy it, okay? <laughs> Another way to propagate milkweed is with cuttings. So same thing with like some vegetable or some, you know, or tomatoes, you cut it, you jab it in there. Um, moist soil in the shade until they take roots and it'll grow. Uh, although this type of propagation I find only successful with the tropicals. Not really with this. For some reason, it's just a little bit stubborn. Um, but I do find it easier on this. It's almost like a sure shot. Like you just cut it, put it in the water, in the, either in the water or in the moist soil and it'll just take roots. Um, other ones like swamp milkweed, yes, showy, never take roots. So, but for sure, this one is just so easy to propagate. That's why people like to get this one. You know, it's just easier to take care of. All right, let's talk about pest. Ooh, hate that. But, you know, can you guys see it? I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, yeah. yeah, aphid. Um, the most common aphids that you see on milkweed is that yellow one. Ooh, like, ugh. so you'll see them on top usually and all around the stems because, you know, aphids just jab their, um, their, their needle mouth and like suck the, it's like straw and then just suck all the juice. So that's one of the pests, the insect that can eat, uh, the toxic stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of icky, but they're harmless to the caterpillars. Caterpillars would just like walk over them like there's nothing happened. They still eat, you know, like nothing happened. Um, so how do you handle that? I know it's icky. If you have infestation of it, it might uh, bring down the, you know, the, the health of the milkweed. Your seeds won't be as viable. So easy way to do it before it gets too much. If you see one, just flick them. Okay. Or or smush them with your hands, or hose them carefully. Choose that small jet stream, like the tiny one, and carefully, you know, uh, brush it. Um, or people use brush, actually, to kind of brush it off to the floor. And on the floor, people put coffee grounds so they kind of get up, cannot go back up. I haven't tried coffee ground, I kind of like don't do that. And there's an interesting one too, actually, 
I don't know if you can see this, but this lady, she is called the California Butterfly Lady. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a self proclaim or I think because she grows, she raised a lot of butterflies. She put um, banana peel, like strips of thin banana peel, like over here, because you know, that's they like to congregate over there, the aphids. I don't know. I guess for her it works. I never try it because then it will make my plant look ugly. <laughs> I just rather not. Okay. My favorite way to deal with aphids is just wait. If you, I'm a kitchen garden consultant, so I grow vegetable and I also manage aphids that way. Yeah. If you practice polyculture in your garden, um, which means you plant different types of vegetables, you know, or flowers or things like that those that attract beneficial insects the insects will take care of it you start seeing um actually on this one i saw a ladybug larvae still tiny but those are the ones that's gonna feast on the aphids because they see there's a lot of aphids there ladybugs ladybugs will come hoverflies will go there too and it just starts you know eating up the aphids you will get an ugly plant after that too because you're going to see instead of a yellow dot, you're going to see black dots all over the place. But by then, you know, you can just kind of flick them, brush them or whatever if you, if you worry so much about the look. But otherwise, the aphids got eaten up. So that's good. Um, another one that you'll see often on the milkweed is this guy. It's called the milkweed, milkweed bug. Yeah, that's okay. They're fine. They're harmless. They they eat the seeds. They um they're waiting until the flower turns to see uh to the pods. The pods mature. They have a long proboscis. They will jab into it and it shoot out some biochemical that turns the seed into liquid and suck it <laughs> like wow. and drink it there. So weird. But they're harmless to the caterpillars and they're harmless to the plants. So I mean, unless there's a bunch of them. So I, I usually don't worry about that and they're pretty and just live there. Yeah. So those are the pests. Simple as that. Now, um, to grow, now talking about creating a full garden now, not just the milkweed. How, what time is it now? Oh my gosh. Okay. Almost, almost. We're almost there. Okay. So now we're talking about the milkweed. Let's talk about the garden as a whole because we're talking about a monarch-friendly garden. Monarch-friendly garden doesn't mean that it only contains milkweed, okay? Because mono, uh, the caterpillars, when they finish feeding at night, they usually hide. Or when they become, uh, they want to become a chrysalis, they usually wander off the usually they are here. Or sometimes you see people see it on, um, on the, the rim of their car, on the wheel that guy happens to spot it and then move that 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 chrysalis or in the weird places you'll see yeah so they need the pl places to hide from the predators as well some place you know you know they they can just hide away so you'll see them creating this usually usually not in the near vicinity of the food plant they usually wander off someplace else i have the plants over there and mom found the caterpillar over there they can walk pretty fast when they really need to. That little chunky one, yeah, they can walk pretty fast. They go chuk, 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 chuk. like I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to find some place. So like they just go. They're pretty fast, yeah. They're really fast. Um, so creating that full garden around it, I'll give them space to hide, give them space to create their um, for pupae, and also creating places for the the butterfly to f to feed you know to the nectars and not just um like i said not just milkweed but different type of flowers different type of vegetable i say vegetable again because i'm a kitchen consultant so um the reason i say vegetables is because dill fennels um celery cilantro when they bolt it and i purposely bolt them sometimes um just put them in a hot like area because the flowers actually attract a lot of pollinators more so than just a regular flowers. For some reason, it's just more fragrant, I guess. And that actually, the one that I just said, dill, fennel, celery, cilantro, they attract ladybugs, um, hoverflies, which also feeds on aphids, and um, ladybugs, hoverflies, lacewings, and lacewings as well. 
So you want to attract those into the garden. So you can't just plant milkweed because they're not like, eh, I don't like that, you know. <laughs> but you have to plant different types. And it makes your garden so pretty too. Okay, you, know, you attract different type of pollinators. The more pollinators there, the butterfly will probably feels safer because, you know, it's something that's more inviting. Now, talking about that, um, I want to show you this plaque. Monarch Way Station. Sounds cool, right? What is a Monarch Way Station? It's a step further than um, from, from a pollinator garden. So there's a criteria in order to have a garden being called a way station. So some of them, the details are gonna be in a PDF. So again, I need your email in order to give you the PDF, yeah? So in order for a garden to be certified as a Monarch way station, it needs, I'm just gonna kind of gloss over the criteria, about 100 square foot of space, so 10 by 10, sometimes less, depending, um, at least 10 milkweed plants it doesn't matter what they are i'm not sure if they're really picky about you know native or non-native it has other plants the butterfly can feed or take shelter because you know they need to hide from the wind and the predators and it to be able to support all stages of the butterfly life so from laying the egg for the larvae the tiny one like to eat to hide to come back and you know and finally creating a chrysalis so once your re the requirements are all met you can see it if you're up to the challenge see all the requirements met and then you can actually go to that the website i'll give it to you um and you can register your garden and you get a plaque a certificate yeah. and you get this to be put so you can put that in your, garden. in your garden yeah you can put that in the garden so so are you up to the challenge <laughs> who wants to, yeah you want to create a monarch way station? There'll be a fun project. <laughs> she wants to do it, but you, I mean, you're doing it, right? Yeah. So there will be something to think about. So not just getting this, but think about also your garden as a whole, what you want to plant there, you know, what type of flowers and whatnot. Um, since this is not the milkweed, think about more of a native flowers for your garden. Okay, because um, I think it's just uh, a good practice in general. I do put like a couple of non-natives, obviously, but you know, as if you could, I would suggest majority of the flowers in your way station garden be um, a native flowers. So you have a lot, and like here, um, yeah, this one has a lot of stuff in there. So. I just grabbed this from the um, the shop. So if you want to purchase this, you just take this and then just bring it to the front. This is easy because this is a mix of flowers. You can just spread them. And because they are native, they just kind of pops and they're just going to die and then pop and die. And some of them are more perennials than the other. Some are annuals. Um, so yeah, so just do that. All right. Okay, so I guess we kind of already talked a lot about it. Since I still have your attention, I want to remind you guys next Saturday, I'm going to do another class over here and it's a paid workshop. It's about growing tomatoes. So if you want to grow this much tomatoes, <laughs> okay, you got to start small. You got to start small and we're going to do that in that workshop. You can come up here later and check the pictures out. So each one of you guys are going to do hands-on creating your own planter everybody gonna have a seven gallon grow bag and you guys gonna have one tomato plant of your choice and one companion plant so in that class i'm going to talk about companion planting how to take care how to prune your tomato plants you know depending on the areas like for the container for the raised bed or for whatnot okay and that's pretty much it and just be keep a watch every time you come here um just keep a watch on a little sign in the front because in may i'm already planning classes for may um uh, my plan is to do either succulent garden um kitchen garden to table class um that's a that's a cooking class and uh, how to start a kitchen garden free seminar 
So that's something interesting. And I do have your email, so I can also send you the information via the email as they come. All right? Yes. Oh, yeah, they do kill, they do actually kill um, the caterpillar. It's nature. It is what it is. If you do not want them to get killed, then you get this. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about, like I said, I'm not going to talk about how to rear and raise butterflies because that's going to be another two hours. <laughs> okay. There's going to be more involved, seriously. So I'm just going to talk about the plant for now. So digest that. Think about it. Let nature take its course first. Once it's really piqued your interest, then go a step further. Like you have a cabinet. Yeah, she has a big wooden cabinet where, you know, if you Google it, you know, monarch, butterfly, uh, habitat, you'll see from anywhere from something like this, something big, even something like that, like that big. People do that. Okay. Um, so what else? In nature, the percentage of this monarchs to survive, it's about one to two percent. It's not a lot, but considering one butterfly lays about 400, 500, I think, eggs. So that's quite a lot. And there's a lot of butterflies out there. So I think nature already knows the math. One percent to two percent is good. Um, there is another politics about people raising butterflies versus nature letting it go. So I'm not even go there. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. So, um, but yeah, there's a lot of things involved in this thing. So don't make it political guys. Just have fun with it. <laughs> I have a video small area. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But I mean, in my, I gotta keep it in containers. Yeah. Yeah, they, they grow in the containers. Although, if you have them more secluded, like under, chances are the, the butterfly probably won't go in it. Because, you know, if it's in the open space, they would go. But if you hide it or it's in a, in a protective space, they probably won't go in. They're iffy about it. You know, like you wouldn't go to something that is kind of foreign, like the environment. So if you have a patio, maybe put it outside the patio as opposed to under something that's open and have a lot of sun so they would do that yeah uh not a lot not a lot they grow out in the wild this one doesn't really need a lot too as long it's kind of like the vegetable as long as the ground is moist they're okay yeah as long as the ground is moist they're okay the narrow leaves means they're conserving more water because there's not a lot of space um, on the leaves for the water to evaporate and, you know, absorbing too much heat. And seriously, this is actually enough for a monarch. Um, even though they're small, they feast on it. And when there's, they ran out of the leaf, they just have to make do, honestly. Um, if they're... A lot of cases, what I see when they, hey, when they ran out of leaves, usually then they are forced into early uh, pupation period. Like they, they start looking for places to hang. And then you'll see a smaller butterfly. It's a little bit premature, but if they already reach a certain size, they'll be fine. They'll, they'll survive. Any other question? So it's already fully closed and then it's crinkled. It never fully inflate the the wing. How's the belly? The belly like round or is it? Yeah, probably. I. The best. Yeah. Oh, is this still alive? Dude, I. <laughs> They're, they're different, again, they're always two sides of, of things, right? People would feed it at home, you know, with nectar, and they do, and you see them, like, they, they come out, and then they just lap your, yeah, orange, uh, sugar water, honey water. Yeah. 
Yeah, usually people when that happens, it's a natural selection. You know, unfortunately, only the strong survive. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in the beginning, I raised butterfly for two years. Um, I have two enclosure. They're not that big, um, bigger than this. It's a lot of work, guys. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, it's not, it's a lot of work, especially the way I do it. It's not like yours, <laughs> especially the way I do it, it's a lot of work because I have to keep on cutting and, you know, changing and cleaning the poop. Oh my God. Do you have, oh, is that what that is? yes, that's oh, the poop. Wow. <laughs> Those are the poop. Um, but um, I was about to say, after two years, I, since I don't have a lot of space, I release about 70 butterflies each year, that year. So, oh. so total of 140. Um, I experienced them dying, you know, sick for no reason. It's just like, you know, and then I start going into vegetable gardening and knowing that the caterpillar won't eat my vegetable. So I thought, you know, I'll have them next to my race bed. Not a good idea because like I said, they, will, they do wander off. I ended up killing two before I finally like, oh my God, okay, no. So I put them on the other side of the house away. Um, that brings me to something. You would think that wasps or birds or something that would kill the, um, the butterflies. It's actually not. It's actually humans with the pesticide. So the number one um, butterfly, like caterpillar killers is actually human pesticides. Even though it's organic, you think like, you know, um, organic spray is safe. BT, what's BT? Do you know what BT stands for? Uh, we just call it BT. It's, it's a uh, pest. Here you go. BT. Oh gosh, I don't even put it in there because I don't even bother. <laughs> okay, you, you hear it a lot. BT, BT, BT in, in vegetable gardening. Oh, I have caterpillars. What should I do? Spray with BT. It's organic. Well, yeah, because um, it's considered, it's allowed in organic farming. Because it's a natural, uh, non-pathogenic bacterium that is naturally found in the soil. Unfortunately, though, organic as it is, it will kill the caterpillars. Like, they will just drop and rithing. It was so sad looking at them. And they start oozing green stuff. I was like, ooh. Never happened to me, but it happens for some weird reason um, on a couple of them. And that particle of that spray is really fine. You would think you would spray it over there and you have a... a uh, the milkweed right here, the wind will carry that particles. So chances are they might get killed. So yeah, that's why if you have that, practice non-spraying anything, not even soap water, not even alcohol. I mean, if you Google, like, how to get rid of aphids because they're really ugly. It's nature. What do you want to do? I mean, control it, you know. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not that much of a control freak, so it's okay. Um, yeah, people spray um, diluted alcohol, and after that, they spray it again. But what if it hits the, uh, the eggs? I was trying to find eggs on here. Did you see? Oh, no, no, no. The egg is like a pearl white, really tiny. Yeah, you see it in kind of like in this kind of light, which is good. Huh? I know she usually helped me hunt for it. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? No? Um, yeah. The population, you said that they, the population go up and down like the stock market. Yeah. Um, Every year, it, yearly. So it's not been gradually declining like the bees? Depends who reporting it. Seriously, depends on who reporting it. So keep yourself sane and keep the fun in because gardening is supposed to be fun. Unless, oh my God, there's one over there. Okay, well, you guys can check it out later. Okay, that's about, yeah, that one, I think it's just recently shed the skin. It's still kind of like in the Instar 3. So there are stages of them. Like I said, I can talk about it forever. Um, what did I just say? I was so, like, so, now I forgot what I was saying. The population depends on which news you are reading. So it could go up or it could go down. So just keep yourself sane. Just do whatever you can. Have fun with it. You know, if you want to go further, like if you want to get the microscope and check for OE, whatnot, if it has OE, 
Okay, here's another thing. If this is a bit detail, I didn't even put it in here. It's a bit more detail. Butterflies who already get OE infection in their body, so they know they have the parasites on them. On them, they actually would go to a non-native milkweed as opposed to the native milkweed. Um, reason being, non-native tends to have more of I forgot the name of it. The substance, the toxicity level, and the sap is higher. So, I think it's a. I'm not sure how, how, how much they have done in terms of the research, but is is an early research or not? I'm not sure. But the research do show that when the butterfly has OE, they lay eggs in the non-native plants that has a higher level of toxicity. And it somehow helps reduce the OE level um, of the offspring. Um, but then the other argument say, well, now they can become addicted to it. Now we have to plant non-native. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that meant. But the, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 I think so. So this one, so she's pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, so that, so. But in general, if you have an OE butterfly that's deformed, you have the time and, you know, if you have the time to nurture it and it does give you satisfaction, go for it. They just want to live and then when they die, they die. They could die the next day. Who knows? You know, they could live for like 14 days. You never know too. So, okay. Uh, don't forget, next Saturday, if you want to sign up, sign up fast. I only have either five or six spots left. It's going to be fun growing tomatoes. Who doesn't like tomatoes? I know sometimes that some people does. But um, tomatoes is really good, especially homegrown organic tomatoes. Um, it's like about five bucks a pound in the store, I think. And it's like mushy too. It's not even fresh, right? Yeah. How much is the box? $50. You do get a goodie bag. You get, and we get like raffle prices. You know, it's a lot more fun. It's, it's a you know, it's more interactive than you just sitting here and just talking like this. Okay. Oh, everybody got raffle tickets. Everybody sign in. If you sign in, you get a raffle ticket. I'm going to draw a raffle. Yay. All right. Nothing fancy. Um, it's just something fun. So I got this really cute sticker. It is a sticker. Yeah. It's really cute, I think. Yeah. Um, and a pack of seed of, I believe this is the native one. Yeah, these are the native one. The narrow leaf. Asclepias incarnata. Not sure which one that is. Uh, it's just a blend. So, so we'll see. Okay. So this is together. Ah, go in there. So everybody got this? Yes? Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, and do you wanna? Okay, so if you don't win, blame him. <laughs> if you have Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram. It's husband to feed. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> And also, so that's for our home life blog. So I do anything from like gardening, raising chicken, um, cooking. What else do I do? We do workout too. Exercise. Exercise. Yeah. yeah. I used to be a fitness instructor um, almost for 10 years. Huh? Yeah. And then what else did we put in there? DIY stuff. He's the one who built my uh, all my raised beds and uh, my chicken coop and handy things around the house. Oh, oh Kavina, Kavina. Yeah. <laughs> I know, we were like, no, we know we we're not born here. You can tell from my accent. And yeah, it's a weird thing. Okay. Are you ready? Just pick one. Okay. <laughs> Just like, let me win, let me win. Just okay, okay, let me win. All right, the last three digit is 294. Oh, you did! Oh my god! See? Psychic connection! <laughs>
Here you go. You're welcome. So cute. Um, all right, guys. What else? Do you have any question? Oh, here's something you can see. Apanya? Oh. Oh yeah, this is the surprise, Melina. Um, you can say thank you to her later on the way out. And Nico. Um, so she said she has how many? Twenty five. How many is there? So she has twenty five. So she asked me, Kat, how many people come here?" I'm like, uh, "I don't know. We have some, but then you know, some people usually just you know let people and come by." So she wants to give you guys a free narrow leaf milkweed. That's a native milkweed. All right. So, but since we only have twenty five, so let's start uh, one per household first, and after that, then we can draw a raffle. <laughs> So yeah, on the way out. So why don't you guys take one per household, and and then you know if we have any left over, then we'll we'll do. So that's just more fair that way. Yeah, you can. Um, there is this things uh, in part of the PDF that I'm gonna send you guys is this one from this com uh, organization is talking about um, the native milkweed per region. Northeast, South Central, Southeast, Western, Arizona. Arizona is its own region. Wow. Okay. Cool. California is its own region. We have our own region. So our region has narrow leaf, showy. I have this, by the way. This is really cute. Um, it has a fuzzy um, leaf, desert milkweed. I tried growing that. That's the one if you go to national park and um, milkweed has a very distinct leaf pattern. It's always come out in a crisscrossing like perpendicular in a set. So it's always a set oh. and then the other set. A set. Yeah, it's very saying. distinct. Okay. So you might be able to spot them in the national park as when you go hiking. You're not supposed to take them home. Although I did dug up one. <laughs> yeah, it didn't survive though. I mean, it, 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 that's the environment. Like this, they grow out of this. Um, it's hard. Um, California milkweed, Asclepias californica. Felix! Felix, what the hell is that on your bum? Oh, yeah. Hard leaf milkweed. Oh, that's going to be cute. Wooly. Oh, there's a milkweed that's called hairy ball. <laughs> it, Google it and you'll see what I mean. It's called hairy ball milkweed. And that should be actually native because it's very narrow leaves. If if it's not in our region, it's probably in Arizona. But you know, it's close enough. It's close enough. Um yeah, so if you wanna try growing. Yeah. The leaves are very flat, very fragile. So yeah, don't squish them. Don't like, you know, put some stuff on them. They're very fragile, the leaves. So um, all you need to do is just put them in, well, just follow the instruction. <laughs> put them in a moist soil and they'll grow. So showy milkweed. Um, we do have common milkweed seed. Like I said, common milkweed is not native for our area, but they do feed a lot more caterpillars because one leaf is like a lot bigger than that one um that one there's a comment this is the butterfly flower but butterfly wheel weed uh tuberosa so this is basically look like that with the flower orange um that one is like this but the flower is yellow it's called hello yellow um they're not native here they're native further south so what else do I have here? This is the stuff that I just pull out from the nurse uh, from the store here. Um, if you want to grow flowers, um, you can choose either like this. I have this at home. It's just a, a bunch of mix, and they are pretty. If you like the English kind of garden type, like you know meadow that's just all kinds of things, I do like it. 
I don't really like French garden. Yeah, like wildflowers. Wild garden. Yes, wild garden. Like French garden is more manicured, you know, but I like the messy one. I don't have to do much of it. <laughs> so they have that too. So that's okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I disturb you. Okay. Um, are you about to hang Jay or not? <laughs> this one has been up there. Um, it's supposed to start the pupating process. So it's probably making the bed right now to hang down. Um, the, this is a lot more work. A, you have to be, uh, get cuttings. You have to get cuttings. Um, and if they're kind of wilting like this, they're picky. They were like, Bleh. I don't want to eat that. I want fresh cutting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just a lot more work. I did that for a while. And the best time to take the cuttings, dude, you're competing with me. <laughs> um, the best time to, this one is actually the hello yellow. This is the one that I have at home. Yeah, the yellow flower. Um, the best time to make to take the cuttings in the morning when it's you know still perky and they they perky they stay perky longer. I use the um, orchids or flower tube, so you can get that from Amazon. Um, so oh, I see it. I yeah, to keep the plant, uh, yes, yes, uh, to keep the plant water and not to have water just hang in a jar because stupid caterpillar sometimes fell into it and then drown. Um, it happens. What is wrong with you? Anyway, I hope, I hope, um, there's a bunch of parasites that might kill them in the process. So even though they already become a chrysalis, um, doesn't mean that it will survive. Yeah. Oh, those, by the way, I moved them. So there's a way to move them. I did that. I have a video on that on my YouTube. Of the YouTube channel is husband to feed. It's not blissful growing. Um, there were actually two. But the other one died, so it was a it was a it has a tea fly infected. So as opposed to creating a tight J, it just kind of like flop. I know Melina was so excited. We have one. We have this one. Is like uh no that one's like that. That one's a goner. <laughs> Sorry. It's like oh really? Yeah yeah. Like you can like you know you can tell. So oh anyway, Andy said we have. Five left. So we can raffle this, guys. You guys still have the ticket? Just because you didn't win, won the first one doesn't mean you don't win the second one. This is a very healthy, by the way, this is a very healthy um, um, milkweed. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Mom! I just, I just spread the blame if you guys don't win. Okay. So the first milkweed go, is that one? Okay. No, no, that one. I don't know from what ruffle is. Know, <laughs> You're going to a lot of events. <laughs> All right, eight six three two eight nine. Oh yay! All right, you got one. Here you go. Thank you. Huh? All right, are you gonna be biased? Oh, she is. <laughs> Hey, Dom, Dom, come over here. Huh? You? Okay. All right, she wants to pick, but you cannot look. All right, close your eyes. Okay, good, pick one. Close your eyes, close your eyes, you cannot see. All right, thank you. Oh, here, here, here. The last three numbers, three, zero, zero, three, zero. 300, three, zero, zero. Oh, yay, you win, okay, good. Here you go. Nah. Okay. All right, Dom. Dom is my friend. Come here. I always have him pick up my raffle. <laughs> he is my friend from the gym. We know each other for a long time, huh? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Back when I still teach. Going, what? Maybe going like 15 years. Yeah. Like Was it from when I still teaching uh, turbo kick? Yeah, turbo kick. Oh my god, I love turbo kick though. Yeah. And then body combat, insanity. What else do we oh, do? Yeah. All kinds of things. I know. All right, Dom, pick one. You pick a whole bunch. 
Just one, just one. Okay, last three digit. <laughs> Two nine four. Yay! Oh my God, it's your lucky day. That's your lucky day. Here you go, girl. Yeah. Awesome. They raise a monarch at home. You sure? Yeah, there you go. Because you raise monarch, so you do need the help you can get. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, ada di sini. All right. Um, I'm gonna pick one now. Three zero seven. Oh yay! Here you go. Thank you. All right, guys. I have one left, but I think you'll agree if I give this to this girl who can win this because she pick up the you know she pick up the raffle. She always win this. Here you go. Thank you. So now you guys can have one each. All right. So no spraying on the plants, and if you happens to go to a nursery. And you see the plants is super clean, doesn't even have bugs, then stay away from that plant. <coughs> Chances are that plants has been sprayed. Even though, um, don't trust big box store because the people who work there, they don't know. They don't grow them. They get it supplied to them. And the people who supply them, uh, supply those, they may not tell them the whole truth. Um, I'm not saying the whole every Home Depot or whole Lowe's are bad because I do, um, you know, I did go to Home Depot in Covina here before, or was it Baldwin Park, and I see a bunch of fat caterpillars on there. So I know they're they're good, but some are not. So I've I've heard horror stories when they go go home with this, um, trying to feed the caterpillars when they they put this in the enclosure, suddenly they have like a bunch of like casualties. Oh, it was just so sad. So yeah, so just be mindful. And I know over here, they they're very meticulous about that. So yeah, so there to that. Yeah. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I know we'll go a bit longer because, like I said, it's something that I you know I can keep talking. Um, what was your Instagram again? Blissful underscore growing, and then the other one is husband to feed. Husband to feed. Okay. Blissful underscore growing and husband to feed. So if you, on the way out, if you don't get um, the postcards yet, you can take one of this. You can take one of this, one of each. So this one is just to let you know the, uh, the next event. And I will change it up soon after next week for the May. So May, I'm thinking about doing um, succulent garden, um, how to start a kitchen garden seminar for this. And... Um, what did you do? How to start kitchen garden? Da, 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 da. Suckling. Oh, kitchen garden to table. So this is going to be the first time I'm going to do uh, a cooking. So, okay. So it's so going to be two workshops possibly and one free seminar. So, so pay a watch of that. And this one is just telling you about what I do as a kitchen garden consultant. So I teach people, I go to your house and teach you how, you know, how to kind of strategize your garden how to do a basic organic gardening, how to best utilize your space. And if you want to, I can also help you design your vegetable garden or maybe monarch garden in this case. <laughs> so um, if you are interested, you can always give me a call and we can do a discovery call. It's only take about 10 to 15 minutes. It's not long. And the discovery call is free. You can just call and we can talk about like, you know, and then I just get to know what you're looking for whether it's something that you're ready to do or not like you know because having a vegetable garden is is something yeah like what you do but it is possible to do it to take care of it once a week we do that once a week right we just monitor the garden once a week i did an installation at church at my church and i only go there once a week on sunday on the service, the service. <laughs> and after the service and i go to the back and check the garden so it's not like you have to do it every day. You can. I do it just because I enjoy it. But, you know, if you don't have much time, then you can, you know, you can find a way around it. So those are just in the pink, pink stuff.
and my business card's right here. So my website, my email, and my Instagram is right here. I didn't put husband to feed over here, but feel free to follow me there. Because sometimes I do also um, giveaways or soup sticks or whatever on either one of my Instagram. And that, and let me see if I make sure I can read everyone's email. Uh, Lord loves. Coca-Cola. You like Coca? Coca Cola? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> pa- patty melt out of sight. Ooh, I like that. That's cute. Sarah, Sarah, S A M H U, big younger. Come over here if you want to check out, you know, this. Oh, and this is also like the same thing that I'm going to send you the PDF information on, um, on how to create a way station. No, she found it. I think she said here. Wait, what did she find it? It's just a white. It's not. No, it's 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 under. It's got to be under, either on the tip of the thing and or usually under because the um the butterfly come in and then the tail goes like under. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like, can I put two in a plant or just this one? Will they will continue growing on new shoots. Okay. So yeah. So one is enough. enough. One is Thank enough. you. Thank you. I enjoyed that. I know. Oh. <laughs> can you take a picture for us? Oh, I don't know. Is, is oh, that on? Point. Okay, okay. Oh, this is Eric. He raised chickens too. Oh, hey! Yeah, there's yeah. Oh, cool. Where do you live? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah we should we should. We should I know. Connect. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, cool. Yeah. So, just... do I get your email there? Oh, yeah, it's on there. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome! Oh my god! Okay, so not just milkweed. Do you, do you also um yeah, flowers. flowers and stuff and bushy ones so they can oh, hide oh, from oh, the tea fly? Okay. Have you ever had casualty yeah, with the tea fly yet? Yeah, I know. I hate that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I want to take I want to take some picture with some people. All right, let's take a picture really quick. Let me see the casino. You guys want to take a picture with me? Oh, yeah. Come here. Come on, April. <laughs> Come on, girls. Come on, let's take a picture. Where are they? Come on. All right, Eric. Right, see ya. Come on. You're here. You can be here. There you go. All right, thank you, thank you. I'm Daryl. I, I called you yesterday. We, we chatted. Oh, cool. <laughs> and you've been racing monarchs too. Yeah. Awesome. We were, we were looking some out yesterday, uh-huh. and you know, the big big cages that you can kind of almost step into. So oh, my goodness. Just about 50% of those inside, so that'll be another day when the sun comes out. And oh, as you my say, God. it's almost like it's in your blood, and then it's like they're ruling you. I know. I got up in the middle of the night. Did I feed them or not? I know, the, so the that's garage. the thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I try and get them in from the garden because there's too many tears. It's almost like, oh, it's all I infected. Know. And then the chrysalis, you know, if it's, yeah. it hangs, it's got a little yeah. dot on it. And then yeah. It's like the first one that I actually yes. got, um, the first one that I rear and become a chrysalis, I was so excited. Yes. And I'm like, what is this? It's kind of like fl- uh, fruits that has yeah. rotten a little bit. I'm yes. like, what is that? Yeah. And I was like, mm. the next day I see like a dental floss hanging. coming down. Yeah, that's I always said that's its fruits. Oh. Life, life source. Yeah. Like, oh, what and I was like, you? what is this? Why is the dental yeah. floss there? Because yeah. <laughs> I use dental floss to, t- to, tie. to tie it up. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I'm yes. like, why, why is it there? Yeah, what's that? I, do you have a memory? Mem- yes. I so then I'm that. like, uh, and I Google it, and people are like, yeah, that's a tea fly. I'm like, oh. Yeah. So from then, then I start collecting the, the eggs. Yes. yes. Because one is already, if I missed it, if it's already that big, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. like, you're on your own because, yeah. you know. Is anybody waiting to see? Uh, very... How old the plant is, the plant that you have there? In, the, the, uh, the big one? Yeah. yeah. The one that they had a, at, least, the at least one or two winters. Okay. At least one winter because it's been cut. Oh, you can tell. Okay. And over time, the, the roots is going to become more 
have fear 